the grant recipients of our high impact community outreach program. You get to learn about all of the amazing work that they are doing in this community and also talk and think about how we can be more helpful beyond just our money, but also our bodies and our time and our talent in supporting that work in this community. And um, I've been instructed to tell you that uh, you will also hear me on the radio Friday morning talking about our program, uh, Heart of the East End, hosted by Gianna Volpe on uh, WLIW, which is 88.3, Friday mornings from, time, from 9 to 11. I will probably be in the first time of the show. Uh, so lots to learn about the High Impact Grant Program and um, a lot of thank yous. We, just, I, we try to thank people all of the time in the moment and also uh, there's just been a lot of exemplary service these last couple of days. And so I wanna thank uh, all of the people who came and participated in our visioning workshop. You can see some of the evidence of that on the wall and the folks who made that possible, um, our Committee on Shared Ministry, which is um, David Holstein, Ken Dorf and Sue Penny for planning and organizing that event. Carolyn Holstein and their Karen Connections team, but really Carolyn Holstein <laughs> for providing the food that made that day so comfortable and so warm for all of us. If you were here, uh, during the evening this week for our Prophetic Voices film series. Um, that is Carolyn Holstein, John uh, Andrews, and Mark Potter for bringing these really important issues and discussions to us, uh, learning about theology in our everyday lives and opening that up to the community. And if you are enjoying the beauty of the building and the grounds, Jerry Boyer, who is somewhere, um, and uh, the whole building and grounds team, it's Jerry, it's Martha and Mark Potter. They're the new bench somewhere. So people don't have to worry about falling to their death when you sit on a broken one. Jim Thurman for making sure that our Memorial Garden looks beautiful. And the thing about thanking individual people is that you always miss somebody. For all of you who are doing all of the beautiful work of this congregation, our thanks. Uh, Carolyn Holstein, I almost forgot that you actually have a real announcement. Hi, good morning. I just wanted to let everyone know that on election day coming up, that there is an opportunity for us to vote our values with the town proposition number three for community housing. And to remind you to please flip your ballot because that's where the proposition is. So there's some information about it right out at the desk in the social hall. And we also have, we have big lawn signs. So please take one home. Thank you. Uh, so if you came here not expecting this, let me tell you that this morning we are doing our annual animal blessing. I also wanna remind everybody, we have a lot of space. Uh, so feel free to spread your chairs out if that is going to make you and your animals feel a little bit more comfortable. Um, we have a whole lot of room and let's like use it. Do we have any visitors who would like to introduce yourselves this morning? Yes. Day, we're in our bar and Bunny, you might know her. She's been here about two thousand years. She's been here So, Jerry, thank you for having us. Welcome. 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 And Welcome. Thank 
If you're visiting in person or online, we invite you to sign our guest book in the Narthex or online so that we can learn more about you and we can help you learn more about us. Someone from our care and connections team will be in touch with you. Uh, so our theme for October is awe, which is a fitting theme for our animal blessing. The wonder and the awe that we find when we slow down and attend to our relationship with the animals in our lives. To light our chalice, we have these words from Florence Caplo. All animals are our relatives. We light this chalice in honor of the animal realm, furred and hoofed, two-legged, four-legged, many-legged, fanged and clawed, gentle and fierce, wild and tame. May we remember that all animals are our relatives, worthy of care and respect. This first song for us to sing together is in your gray hymnal. It's number 361. I invite you to stand as you feel willing and able as we enter, rejoice, and come in. Joyful, joyful. Open. Don't be afraid of some change. so fascinated by the screen all of a sudden I'm wondering what's happening on the screen so I have a joke a joke as our first message uh, and I will say don't stop me if you've heard this before you may have heard this before uh, so there's a guy in this joke, it's always a guy. I don't know why. Who saved all of his life to buy his dream car. When I first learned the joke, it was a Lamborghini. But that was a long time ago. And so I'm gonna like time it up. Let's say a Bugatti. Saved all of his life for his dream car, a Bugatti. And when he finally saved up the money and bought his car, he wanted to mark this occasion, this occasion of deep significance, and decided that he would go to his Catholic church and ask the priest for a blessing. So he goes to the church. Father, he explains the situation. Finally have my dream car. Will you, no, I see I did it wrong. <laughs> I finally achieved my dream. Will you bless my Lamborghini? The priest, of course, my son. Of course, I'll do the blessing. But first, you have to tell me. Also, I did it wrong twice. First, you have to tell me, 
what's a Bugatti? Because it's a Bugatti, not a Lamborghini. Everybody knows what a Lamborghini is. What's a Bugatti? Ah, he was disappointed. Obviously, he says, I, just, I, don't, I don't think you're the right person to really understand the significance of this blessing. And so he tries instead the synagogue down the road. He goes to the synagogue, he introduces himself to the rabbi, explains the situation. I finally achieved this dream. I want to mark the significance. Will you bless my Bugatti? And she says, of course, of course, I want to help you with this blessing. Just what's a Bugatti? Disappointed, but not thwarted. He tells her, I appreciate you, but I, I don't think you're the right one for this blessing. Still not thwarted, he heads down the road, sees the rainbow flag in front of the Unitarian Universalist Meeting House and thinks, maybe, goes inside, finds the minister, uh, goes inside, finds the minister, and says to her, let's say it's me, I've achieved my dream, I bought my Bugatti, it's my dream, I would love to mark this moment with a blessing. The minister says, ah, a Bugatti, of course I want to help you mark this. I want one myself if it were electric. <laughs> but you just, you just have to help me out. What's a blessing? <laughs> the joke is that we don't know blessings, we don't do blessings. But we know that we do. We know that we mark the significant moments in our lives all of the time. Traditionally, a blessing is a prayer to ask for God's favor. Generally speaking, that's not what we do when we offer a blessing. But it is a pause to offer gratitude for what we have, to honor the sacred, those things that are special, those relationships that are special. And if we are not asking for favor from God, then to whom are we asking this blessing? Ourselves. It is our commitment to act and live in a way that honors those things that we hold sacred. And so we do this animal blessing as a way to for us to show our gratitude, to mark those sacred and holy relationships that we have with the animals and the earth, and to remind ourselves of our commitment to honor those relationships and keep them sacred. We do it generally in October as a reminder or an honor of St. Francis of Assisi. Uh, St. Francis uh, is the patron saint of animals. He was a 12th century Italian friar uh, who many say blessed animals in his life. Uh, people describe him as a kind of ancient Dr. Doolittle. He would preach to the birds so I'm going to encourage everybody who has an animal, because we have lots of animals, and even if they're comfortable being off leash, they're probably not generally used to being in a room full of stimulated animals and people. And so for this hour, we're just going to keep everybody a little bit closer than we might on a leash, not running around freely. And then afterwards, they can run around outside to their heart's content. Francis of Assisi would not have put animals on a leash. He would have prayed to them. He preached to them. He freed them from cages. He communed with the wolves. He recognized the animals in his life and animals in the world as his siblings. He referred to them as his sisters and brothers. For us, a people of interconnection, 
who honor and recognize and proclaim our interconnections with all things on this planet. I can't think of a better patron saint for us to remember and call into our space than St. Francis of Assisi on this Sunday when we honor our interconnection with animals. May your roots grow deep. May your branches spread far. May you find this world to be a wonderful place full of animal noises and leave it better for those who follow. Thank you. We have windows also. It's a little warm with all of the people and all of the bodies and um, we turned on the heat. Uh, we support the ability to turn on the heat and the lights with the time, talent and treasure of your pockets. Um, your contributions help us to do the work of this congregation and it helps us to show up in our community for justice and in service. Uh, your financial contributions, whether online through PayPal or the basket that will circulate, will be generously, uh, gratefully, gratefully accepted. On the first part of the journey, I was looking at all the life. And there were plants and birds and rocks and things. There were sand and hills and rains. The first thing I met was a fly with a buzz and a sky with no clouds. The heat was hot and the ground was dry. The air was full of sound. I've been through the desert on a horse with no name. It felt good to be out of the rain. In the desert, you can remember your name. Cause there ain't no one for to give you no pain. sun skin began to turn red after three days in the desert fun i was looking at a river bed and the story told of a river that flowed made me sad to think it was dead i've been through the desert on a horse with no name it felt good to be out of the rain in the desert you can remember your name Cause there ain't no one for to keep you no pain La 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 After nine days, I let the horse run free Cause the desert had turned to sea but There were plants and birds and rocks and things There were sand and hills and rings The ocean is a desert with its life underground And the perfect disguise above Under the cities lies a heart made of brown the humans will give no love I've been through the desert on a horse with no name Felt good to be out of the rain In the desert, you can remember your name Cause there ain't no one for to give you no pain la, la, la.
Thank you so much, Stephen, and thank you so much for all of your offerings. This is a time in our community of shared faith when we share the deep joys, sorrows, and concerns of our hearts self. Delight us with your song, astound us with feats of migration. Grant us your perspective, for too often our horizon is limited and we are blind to the full results of our actions. You worms of earth, ants, beetles, spiders, and centipedes, you are the essential but oft forgotten strand in nature's web. Through you, the cycle is complete. Through you, new life arises from old. Remind us of our humility, for the wheel of life does not turn around us. We are not the axle, but merely spokes, no less than unseen, unknown, and shunned companions such as yourselves. You, creatures of the field and wood and field marsh and desert, bear and bison, skunk and squirrel, weasel and wolf. Too often we have sacrificed your homes in the name of progress, clear cutting the forest to fill our desire or covering the earth with tarmac, cement and suburban lawns. Pray that we may remember that the earth was not given for our needs alone. And what we do to you, we eventually do to ourselves. You animals of the farm, horse and cow, pig and fowl, willingly or not, you give your very lives for us your milk for our nourishment, your flesh for our sustenance. Yet too often, we forget that the meat on our tables was once as alive as we are. Forgive our willful ignorance and remind us constantly to give thanks for your sacrifice. And you, dearest companions in our lives, dogs and cats, hamsters and goldfish, you who are with us today, and you who are always present in our memories, you have enriched our lives in so many ways, endured our shortcomings with calm acceptance, taught us something of humanity, taught us how to love. May we hold in our hearts throughout the days of our lives. May we hold you in our hearts throughout the days of our lives. Ashe. Now I invite you to sing together this next hymn in your gray hymnal, number 203. All creatures of the earth and sky. You can rise if that feels good. Oh, creatures of 
Oh, I could sing that song all day. This is the fun part where it gets even more chaotic, but maybe less than it's already been. We invite you to come up with your animal. Uh, you can tell us a little bit about your animal. We will do a blessing. If you are joining us online, you can tell us about your animal. You may have your animal with you. You can bring them to the camera. And if you are holding an animal in your heart and haven't brought them today, you are also invited to come up and share that. I think we might actually use that microphone to make things a little easier. Is it easier if I just walk to you? Yes. Okay. Okay. We want to make things easy? Okay. Hi, I'm Hillary, and this is Winnie Windsor. And we've been coming here for 12 years. We got, we got Winnie um, 12 years ago. And he's been coming. This is his second home here at the church. And he's hi. Hello, Winnie Windsor. Oh, I can touch you. Ah, may you be blessed. Thank you for your service. Okay, I hear scrabbling online. Do we have somebody? Not yet? Uh, well, they'll be next. Who do we have here? Hi, I'm Amy. This is Cheyenne with me. Um, look, look, little dog. See, dog? Dog. <laughs> Oh. We rescued her from the Humane Society in Nebraska four years ago, um, and she traveled cross-country with me all the way here when I moved, and she's she's been my love, my baby girl. <laughs> Cheyenne, thank you for your brief companionship. You are the best. Yes, Marla, do you want to unmute and tell us about sure. Hi, this is Simon. Can you see him? He turned 30 years old this year. He's a half moon conure. Can you scream that? Yeah, look, Simon. You see? And he's my blessing. Simon, thank you for your long and faithful companionship. May you be blessed. I brought Dolly today, and Dolly is from South Carolina, and she was preparing to go into a kill shelter with mange and hookworm, and my friend drove her to New Jersey, and we picked her up, and she's about six months old, and she's really behaving herself. Oops, maybe I spoke too soon. Thank you, John. Dolly, you are a sophisticated lady today. Thank you for bringing yourself to the attention to get out of that shelter. May you be blessed. Uh, good morning, I'm Jerry, and I brought uh, two dogs with me today. First, we have uh, Ebony, who's the mother of the dog next to her, which is uh, Lily de la Noche. And also, her other offspring, Tom, will introduce, but that's Macho. So two of her three puppies are here today. And um, we have a line of purebred labs that we've had going now for many, many years. And uh, they're just very, very sweet dogs. Ebony and Lily, for your curiosity and your companionship, may you be blessed. Uh, this is Macho, another black lab of ebony, and he's from Connecticut, loves the water, and um, wonderful, boisterous, lovely puppy. Macho, for your boisterousness, you're not going to bite me. May you be blessed. Do you have anybody up there? Yeah? Yeah. I know. I have many all over the place. 
Oh, hello, good morning. This is Miso, and we got him from Puerto Rico. He's a rescue. We've had him about three years. And I would publicly like to apologize because I never wanted a dog this size. Uh, my wife and child convinced me because there were no other dogs available at the time. And so we get this guy, and he turned out to be a real scrapper. He, uh, he's, a, he's a Virgo. Um, he likes to mount everything, and he um, also is uh, very impressed with um, non-GMO organic food because that's all he eats, and um, he just loves Sag Harbor. He speaks Spanish, and he... Uh, and yes, he has learned to be loved instead of running away because this is where the food is. I don't give me the dog. I mean, I might take him. Miso, are you a bundle of energy for your dietary discernment and your travel from so far away? Gracias. Please be blessed. No, nobody online. Anyone? Yes, this is this is Luca. I'm here. Can you hear me? I'm here with my four rescue dogs. I don't know if you can see them. They're all they're all um, asleep. <laughs> Or actually, they're paying very careful attention to everything, but they look like they're asleep. And uh, this one in particular is very special because she was very, very sick. And we were able to figure out what was wrong with her. Show your face. There you are. Um, and uh, get her on antibiotics. I was able to figure out that she needed antibiotics. And she was going, she went from being completely unable to walk to being able to run and play, even at her advanced age. So she's quite the blessing, but all, all four of them are a blessing, all four remaining. You want to tell us their names one more time? This is, this is Opie Doobie Princess Beautiful. And there's uh, Augie, the Dr. Doggy. And there's Charlie Ladybug, who you, most, most of you know, because I bring her with me when I come to the to the uh, church. And there's Chula Luca, who shares half my name. Um, all rescues. Beautiful tribe for your loving, loving, gentle companionship. We are grateful. May you each be blessed. Thank you. Uh, this is Cleo, other line, otherwise known as Black Dog in the nature photos that she's my muse with. Um, she's a Labradoodle, eight years old. Um, I always wanted a dog. I couldn't have a dog growing up in the projects when I was a kid. And Layla always wanted a dog, but Stuart did not. And finally, Layla worked on him with like Chinese water torture. And he's, he decided that we needed the exercise back eight years ago. And indeed, she's been amazing. We hike all the time. She loves it. She is really my guru Zen master. Hiking with her, I forget about everything else because she is so excited, so into smelling the deer or seeing the squirrel. And she's a very good dog. She's very, very decent, very friendly. She she loves people. Look, she wants you to pet her. That's that means she wants to be pet. Sit, sit. Cleo, for all of your walks and for literally bringing nature in with you today, we thank you and may you be blessed. This is Brindle. Hello, Brindle. Brindle was a, a fearful, miserable little runt. <laughs> but Martha fell in love with him. <laughs> so we're very lucky to have him. He's the smartest dog we've ever had. The only dog we've been able to walk in the woods off leash with, and he stays with us, which is really wonderful. Yeah, it's good to have you, Brind. Uh, Brindle's a rescue dog, and when we found him, he had just come up from Virginia. He was four months old, and he was hiding in the back of his cage, absolutely hiding, and I fell in love with him. And he's been our rescue dog. He's rescued us through COVID. Brindle, for your fierce intelligence and your rescue, thank you, Oh, 
No, we've done already. Do you have anybody else? Yeah. Go there, actually. You can, do you want to take this one? Hi, I just want to get my two cats blessed. Peekaboo, Gray Tabby, and Charlie, Orange Tabby, who's really quite feral. I'm like the only person that can touch him. So God forbid if something happens to me. But anyhow, if you could bless Charlie and Peekaboo. Charlie and Peekaboo for their companionship, our gratitude, may they be blessed. Yes. Please do if you can screen her there. Oh, I need to ask you to unmute Andy. Okay, I was trying to be shy, but um, <laughs> yeah, good morning. Uh, I have three cats, um, Salem, Atreyu, and Mousia, Um, all rescues, um, of course. Um, and Atreyu is really special. He is an official ESA, and I think most people know I have severe CPTSD and OCD, and you know, I have a lot of nightmares. I'm all a lot through the night. I can't fall asleep. I wake up. I stay awake. Um, but Atreyu, who can be a wild child through the day, all night long he sleeps on my head. And when I wake up, if I'm panicked, he puts his hands on my chest and I rub his hands and his arms. And it's very calming. And uh, I'm never alone. I get up, I go to the bathroom, I'm scared. And uh, he's right there for me uh, all night. You know, and we always joke, my husband's like, oh, yeah, well, I'm just sleeping and useless to you. But, yeah, the cat, the cat is uh, uh, means a lot to me, helps me a lot. Thank you. To this fierce coven for your protection and your care. May you be blessed. There is a unison reading in your order of service, one of the folded inserts. I thought we might cap this blessing by sharing this. Ours is a world alive and allowed with the presence of creatures and critters. Animals abound, interwoven in our human lives and wholly independent. This is the interdependent web of all existence of which we are a part. Some of us have known animals who saved our very lives. Sometimes this is a metaphor. Sometimes it is literal fact. For so many of us, we are better human animals because we have known animal animals as part of our story. Animals are not only cuddly and cute, companions of solace and delight. Animals are deeply wild with the capacity to defend and to kill. Even the ones who have, who have, pronounced, who have been pronounced tame. Let us always show forms of proper respect for this wild way. There is a painful reality that some animals suffer needlessly at our hands. There are animals who encounter human cruelty, left hungry or maltreated, used for mean-spirited profit, habitats stolen and built upon without regard for our shared mutual existence. Let us do what we can to be able to give thanks for animals without hypocrisy or heartless dominance.
There are animals in our daily lives whose labor make our own lives easier, safer, more accessible. Animals who lend us their fur or hair or feathers or fleece or milk or eggs that we might be sustained without their loss of life. Animals who we raise or hunt may it always be compassionately and with respect for the wider web. Though we know that this is mostly not the case, whose lives are sacrificed that some of us eat to cover our bodies, may we move even closer, ever closer to that ideal to live lightly on the earth, taking only what we must and no more. Together, we bless all animals. We bless those we know and love. We bless those unknown to us who have benefited our lives. We bless even the ones that can harm us, affirming with humility their place in the interdependent web. We affirm the impulse for humans to live in right relationship with all other animals on this earth. May we honor our best presence as part of the same family. This next song that we'll sing together, Standing As You Feel Able, Hymn 21 in your gray hymnal, For the Beauty of the Earth. If you're joining us on Zoom, this room will remain open for a few minutes for a brief conversation. And if you're joining us here in the meeting house, we invite you to stay for a conversation and light refreshments running around these beautiful grounds. And we hope you'll join us next week. Our worship service will be led by our HICO team. And afterwards, you'll have an opportunity to meet this year's grant recipients. 
These closing words from Joel Miller. Let our lives be a prayer that waters dry souls, mends broken hearts, refuses to be terrorized, seeks the world's beauty and carries us through its storms. We extinguish our flame with the unison words in your order of service. We extinguish this flame. You are invited to sing along this closing song. It is a rocker. It's a bop. That's what the kids are saying now. It's a bop. Okay.